Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are taking you through Aubrey's frozen party prep. Uh, we're just focusing on the food because I had like four hours of footage to go through and just on the food. We will be doing a decorations and activities party prep in my next video, so stay tuned for that. But I'm super excited to show you guys the foods that we did as well as two different cake recipes. So let's get to it. So we are starting off looking at the sides and the main course. I tried to have every food fit the theme. So we had some Otter Pops that I was gonna freeze and we named them Elsa's Flurries. I did freeze some of them like this so that we could have like half portions for the kids. And once they were frozen, I just cut them down the middle and it was good to go. Next up, we are making some frozen hearts. If you guys know the movie, you kind of see where the frozen heart fits in. But uh, if not, Anna, you know, her heart gets frozen and only true love's kiss can break, you know, the magical spell or whatever. So we decided to go ahead and chocolate dip strawberries in some white chocolate. So I'm rinsing them off first in some water and vinegar, and you will see the water was quite dirty afterwards. So I'm very happy that I did this. And then I let them dry for like a good while because I definitely wanted the chocolate to stick to the strawberry. I didn't want it to be wet and kind of slide off and make a mess. So we're cleaning, drying, and then we will be dipping later on in the evening. So I used some melting chocolate from Michael's. These ones had like cute little sprinkles inside and I only had one bag. So I dipped as many strawberries as I could. And to dip them, I actually put in like three toothpicks in the stem of the strawberry. And it made it a lot easier to like, you know, securely dip the strawberry without worrying about it falling into the chocolate. After dipping, I laid them on a sheet of wax paper and just let them kind of like firm up. And I did this the night before the party. Uh, because we had a lot more strawberries left over, I did have some other white melting chocolate and I just either sprinkled on sprinkles that I got from Dollar Tree, you guys will see the packages later on, or I just dipped the chocolate dipped strawberry in the sprinkles. And I just thought this would be like a fun little decorative type of strawberry for the kiddos. I placed these strawberries on their serving trays and then based on what I read online, I covered them in foil and let them sit overnight. Unfortunately, they were very like, all the strawberry juice kind of seeped out. So I had to like wipe down the trays, remove the strawberries, wipe down the trays and put the strawberries back. It was kind of ridiculous. I should have just dipped them the morning of. But Aubrey saw that I was dipping and she got to dipping too. We talked about the benefits of an apron and we just enjoyed these little chocolate dipped pretzels ourselves. Next up, we are making Kristoff's ice blocks. So we are gonna be making Jello Jigglers. You actually use two boxes of six ounces of Jello, so 12 ounces total, any flavor that you guys want, and two and a half cups of boiling water. I just filled my measuring cup up with water and then microwaved it for a couple minutes until it started to like bubble. Poured it in the Jello mixture and then um, mixed it up until it was fully dissolved. Then I sprayed a casserole dish with some cooking spray and then just kind of like wiped it in with a paper towel because we want just a very light coating to help the jello come off easier when it's hardened. After that, we pour the jello mixture in and then refrigerate it for a few hours. I did this like the day before, so I just left it in the fridge and I am cutting it up into cubes the day of the party. Now, if you want, you could do different a different theme. You could use cookie cutters, but I just wanted ice blocks and it made it a whole lot easier on myself. I honestly can say I could see cutting jello like this forever. Like it was, I like cutting laminated papers, 
and this was kind of gave me like a similar feel. Also, these were a hit. They are very delicious, and had I known that it was only going to make like the small little trays worth, I probably should have done like two or three batches instead of just one, but you live and you learn. So um, I'm doing like a kind of a charcuterie board feel in my display of food. So I wanted two little stations of the Jello. So that's why I filled up two different bowls. Next, we are doing True Love Kisses. So just simple store-bought kisses. I like the cookies and cream, so that's what we went with. So for the main course, we are just doing Costco uh, chicken and Swiss rollers and croissant sandwiches. For Hans and Anna's sandwiches, we're doing snow-capped mountains with cream cheese and a sweet salsa. It's like my family's signature treat. We're doing peanuts for trolls, yogurt covered pretzels for snowflakes, and some of Olaf's noses and ranch um, for another little side. And last but not least, we have some coronation chocolate. So as you guys saw, my little, you know, birthday girl wanted to help. We're going to be making some of Sven's treats or carrot cake cupcakes. This is like my mom's like family recipe and everyone who eats it loves it. So if you want to go ahead and give it a try, I will be including the recipe in this video uh, so you guys can kind of pay attention. I am doing a double batch because I figured I'd rather have more cupcakes than necessary. And I actually made these like... I want to say one or two weeks out from the party and then froze them so they actually freeze really well defrost fairly quickly and because of like being in the freezer like they contain and retain a lot of moisture so it just makes the cake like so much better so um, this was one way that I you know stressed a little less is getting this all done ahead of time and with the chunks of carrots that were just slightly too big, I decided to cook these and make some baby food for Jack. So it was a win-win. What do you have there, Aubrey? A finger. <laughs> That's not sprinkles. Is this finger? You finger them on now. Then I'm gonna make sprinkles. So then we're gonna do that when you speak. A sour finger. We can't die by
So this double batch made, I wanna say at least 48 cupcakes, and I'm putting them on like a paper towel just because the bottom of the cupcake does get a little tiny bit greasy, um, which is okay. I mean, like it, the taste of it at the end is totally fine, but it's just for some reason, the bottom of the liners get a little greasy. So I'm putting those there, and then we are moving on to make the cream cheese frosting, which is delicious. So just a little tip is you really want to whip and beat your butter and cream cheese for a good number of minutes. It really incorporates a lot of air and just makes the frosting just extra fluffy and like less dense. I did have a little bit of cake batter left over, so I decided to make a tiny little mini cake for Aubrey's actual birthday. So that is what this little pan is for. But we are going to now move on to piping on the frosting. I'm using a couple different tips. I've used this first tip um, before in the past when I've made this cake. And then later on, I will be trying for the first time ever to pipe little carrots on top of the cupcakes. So I'm excited to show you guys how those turned out as well as some tips that I learned as I was doing it. So like I mentioned, this is my very first time using this tip. Uh, this is the type of um, piping tip that you want to use when you're making leaves. And this was my very first leaf, you guys. It's a big deal. <laughs> um, and I came up with like a better technique later on to kind of make them more carrot-like. So um, stay tuned for that. But then I went ahead and dyed the rest of my frosting uh, kind of orange for the carrots and used just like a simple little round tip to pipe on the carrots on each cupcake.
So like I mentioned, I kind of learned as I went and you can see how I'm doing the leaves here. I'm kind of going back and forth, back and forth and it creates a more ruffled look. Same with the carrot. I wanted it to look really realistic and have those little lines like carrots do. So kind of pushing the piping bag back and forth as I was piping both the leaves and the carrot really gave that realistic kind of look. Moving on to Aubrey's little mini cake for her actual birthday, I thought it would be cute to pipe on carrots uh, in the shape of a four, which was the age that she's turning. And then I thought, you know, I still have some extra frosting. I might as well just do a little rim around the bottom. And I love how simple this is. You could really do this for any age. And it just really looks, I don't know, really cute in my opinion. So we enjoyed this on her actual birthday. Moving back to the party, um, I'm putting my frozen carrot cake cupcakes out the day of the party. This is just a couple hours before the party and honestly I probably could have put them out like at the start of the party and they would have do totally defrosted by the time it was time for dessert. But they are out and that was all set up. So we are going to move on to the highlight of <laughs> my cakes and my desserts and my foods. This is Aubrey's birthday cake. Um, I really didn't need to make this cake, but I wanted to kind of do a redemption for myself. I have done an ombre cake and I've done a drip cake before. And when I tried to do a colored drip, it was a total fail. <laughs> so I wanted to make this cake um, to redeem myself. And I'm super proud of how it turned out. I am making a vanilla cake here. Um, I've made this a number of times on my channel. So I will, you know, you can find videos of me making it in different versions or different looks or whatever in my recipe videos. Um, but we're making just a basic vanilla cake with a basic vanilla um, buttercream frosting. So nothing too special when it comes to flavors here. For me, this was all about the decoration. But if you guys are really looking for the recipe, um, I will make sure to put this recipe down below in the description box for your convenience, as well as the carrot cake recipe. Uh, that way it's, you know, just really simple and easy to find. So what we are going to start with the cake batter, I because I wanted the cake to look ombre on the outside, I also wanted it to look ombre on the inside. So we are going to add progressively more purple food coloring as we make our little cakes. And I have little six inch silicone cake pans um, and I only have two of them. So I have to like do two cakes at a time get them out, wrap them in saran wrap, get them ready to be frozen, and then repeat the process a couple more times. So that is what we're doing here. Uh, and I wanted just to have a very pale purple cake and then get darker and darker as we go. The nice thing about this vanilla cake is that when it cools down, you really don't need to level it off. And what I decided to do was wrap these cakes up in saran wrap while they were still like hot to retain that moisture. And then I'm popping them in the freezer in a little bit. This was in lieu of making like a simple syrup and letting the simple syrup soak in with the cakes. I just decided, you know what, let's wrap it up. It's a technique that I've seen other people do wrap it up while it's still warm, and um, then when it defrosts from the freezer, you will have a very moist cake. So this ended up working out for us, and I didn't really have to make a simple syrup. They say, be me. The beneath the bed before you go to sleep. Keep up, I shine. And then this last little purple layer was like half of a layer and we didn't end up using it. It was more of like a, let's taste the cake before I assemble everything, just to make sure that it was delicious. 
Next, we are moving on to our American buttercream. Um, I think I'm making, so I made a double batch of the cake, I believe, and then I am making a double batch of the frosting. And this ended up being like just enough for the cake. Um, we did have a little bit left over. And uh, again, the technique of like really whipping your butter for like five, at least five minutes, really helps the frosting be light and fluffy and smooth and creamy rather than like super dense and chunky. So when you're done making your buttercream, it will have a very slight yellow tone to it. And one trick to making your frosting look more white is to add a little bit of purple. I didn't worry too much about adding too much purple because I was gonna have a purple frosting anyways. But if you are looking for a white frosting, add just the slightest bit of purple. You can always add more, but add the slightest bit of purple and get it to that white tone that you're looking for. Then I went ahead and did a crumb coat on this cake, assembled it. All of the layers of the cake were frozen, so it made the buttercream like firm up really quick and just kind of everything hold its shape. Once this was assembled, I popped it back into the freezer and worked on making my ombre tones of purple. And I did the same technique that I did with my cake. I, you know, portioned out my frosting, added a little bit more purple, mixed it in, portioned that out added more purple and so on until I had five different like tones of purple. And uh, then once I had this, it was time to assemble the cake again. So to frost the cake, I just piped on, you know, the different layers of colors up the cake. And in between colors, I did like, I alternated so that there was as best of a blend as possible. I have done an ombre cake before and it looked a little bit more chunky in color. This one blended a little bit better, but it wasn't like perfect, but you know, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Once the cake was fully frosted, I moved on to making the decorations for the cake, which I was going to assemble. Um, once I had the decorations prepared, I was planning on assembling the cake the day of so that nothing would like melt in the fridge or freezer. And you might see what I'm talking about later. Um, but we're starting off by making a little decorative four with melting chocolate and um, some sprinkles. Now I did this before I dipped the strawberries, so that's why you're seeing the sprinkles in the box and the melting chocolate in the bag. <laughs> so you just pipe whatever, you, whatever design you want. In this case, I'm doing a four, but you could do any number. You could literally write out someone's name if you wanted and cover it with sprinkles. While the chocolate was still like wet, I did take my little cake pop stick and just kind of clean up the four, kind of pushing the sprinkles in. And then once that was nice and hard, I flipped it over, attached my little uh, cake pop stick, and then decked the backside out with chocolate and covered it up with some more sprinkles and let that firm up. Then we were done. This was really, really easy, a technique that I haven't done before, but I can definitely see doing this again in the future. So my vision from the cake not only was to have the four on top and candles, but like I wanted it to look like ice chunks like sticking out of the cake. And I decided to melt some purple and blue 
Jolly Ranchers. Um, I mixed some together and then I'm, you're going to see in a second, I make some just separate because I was like, oh gosh, I don't know how these colors are going to look with the frosting, if it's going to clash, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, you melt them at, I believe, 350 in the oven just for a couple of minutes. You see them melt and then I used a little um, toothpick and just kind of swirled it around or like attached the light colors together let that harden and then I broke it up into pieces and I tried to have more like triangular pieces just to kind of have like one edge be like sharp so that I can have that kind of pointing up out of the cake. So I did this I want to say the night before and um, let it firm up or whatever and just kind of like let it be at room temperature. I was afraid to put it in the fridge because I didn't want the moisture to like melt the Jolly Rancher. Uh, so those were just kind of laying out, waiting for me to decorate the cake. So for my last decoration for the cake, it's actually the colored drip. I have 12 ounces of melting chocolate and half a cup of whipping cream. We heat up the whipping cream just so it's starting to simmer and pour it over the chocolate and mix it until it is smooth. I found this recipe online and it is way more than I ever needed for this cake. I probably could have like quartered this recipe and we would have been fine. But um, anyways, now I have just extra dipping chocolate for strawberries or something. I didn't like the color that it ended up being, so I just added some more blue food coloring and um, this was left over from my baby uh, gender reveal for Jack. Um, but I really like how it ended up turning out. And then I just put a little bit on top of the cake, pushed it over the side and let it drip down. And I am so happy with how just even this part of the cake looks, let alone with the other decorations. Like I'm so happy that this was a success. I can definitely see doing this again in the future. And um, like I said, I did not use that much of this blue drip. So next time I will not make as much because it was so, I had so much extra. But now we are just putting in my little Jolly Ranchers, sticking them in. I'm actually doing this like in the middle of the party because I didn't want my cake to start melting because it was a warm day. So I just kind of last, you know, like last minute assembled this cake and then put it out on my little cake stand. But I am so happy with how the cakes turned out, with how my little food table turned out. And I'm so excited to show you guys all of the other decorations and activities in my next video. So thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, learned something new, got a recipe idea that you wanna try, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and make sure you guys subscribe so that you don't miss out on my other party prep videos as well as all of my other motherhood content. I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.